This paper, Lucky Women in a Lucky Cohort, this is a joint work with Ines Bernier, Leo Gasparini, and Mariana Marcioni. Uh, well, the motivation for this paper is that uh, we have um, extensive evidence from developed countries showing that when workers enter the labor market in a bad time, when the unemployment rate is high, they end up being penalized. They face uh, lower earnings and worse career prospects in comparison to workers who enter when the unemployment rate was lower. But these results not necessarily apply to developing countries where the adjustment to negative shocks might be different. For instance, because female labor force participation is low and many women act as secondary workers. They enter the labor market during crisis uh, and where there are men in the household who lose their jobs. And this change in behavior, this entry to the labor market uh, during crisis may include young women uh, who are doing their school to work transition and who may find in the negative shock an additional incentive to enter the labor market and help their families. And this unexpected entry to the labor market uh, may end up having long lasting consequences in the labor market attachment of these young women and their earnings perspectives, for instance, through changes in human capital, through changes in empowerment, in perceptions. So what we say is that this negative shock might end up being beneficial for these lucky women in unlucky cohorts. So what we are going to do in this paper is to analyze gender differences in the effects of facing adverse conditions at the moment of labor market entry in Latin America, which is a developing region and very unstable region uh, where female labor force participation is low and where we have extensive evidence on the added worker effect, this idea of women entering the labor market in bad times. And with this, we are contributing to the literature on scarring effects, uh, the analysis of the long-term consequences of entering the labor market uh, during a recession, which is very extensive for developed countries, but very limited for developing countries. And we add another result. What we are going to say is that there is a group of workers who may uh, end up um, benefiting if from, from entering the labor market uh, during a crisis or, or in a bad time. And this is the, the group of young women. So more exactly what we are going to do is to analyze the effect of facing high unemployment rates at the moment of la presumed labor market entry on workers' labor outcomes, the role of women within the household, and perceptions about gender roles in society. All of these measured 10 years after entry. So our outcome variables are measured during adulthood. We have a, a, a group, a set of labor market outcomes that comes from a cross-section of national household service from 15 Latin American countries over the period 2001 to 17. Then we have two measures capturing the role of women within the household. These measures also come from household service. Then we have a set of variables capturing perceptions about gender roles in society. They come from World Value Service and Latino Barometro. Um, the service, what they have um, is a set of questions um, about um, agreement um, uh, with traditional uh, gender norms or stereotypes. So a typical statement in this kind of service is when a mother works for pay, the children will suffer. And the, the person will say if he's agreeing or not with the statement. And our explanatory variable is the national unemployment rate at the moment of labor market entry. I'll, I will define labor market entry in a moment. Um, this information comes from World Development Indicators and National Household Service and covered the period 1992 to 2007. That was a very unstable period um, for the region with a lot of variation in the unemployment rate across countries and over time. So how do we define a labor market entry? Here the common practice in papers from developed countries is to use the actual date of labor market entry or actual date of graduation from college. What we are going to do instead is to use age 
to create a proxy of labor market entry. And we are going to, to use the calendar year in which the adult persons we see in our, in our data uh, were between 18 and 20 years old. Uh, we use 18 years because this is the theoretical age for completing secondary ed education, which is compulsory in most of the countries of the region. And where we see a, a, an important jump in the rate of labor force participation. Here in this figure, we have the average for the 15 countries in our analysis. And we have that the labor force participation at ages 15 to 17 is only 30%. But for those uh, 18 to 20, it's almost 60%. So we think that using this age range, we are capturing the school-to-work transition. Now, what about adulthood? What we are going to do is to construct a year of birth cohorts uh, using the cross-section of a household service. We focus on a cohorts that were born between 1974 and 1987. That gives us 14 cohorts in each of the 15 countries. And we are going to observe these cohorts over the period 2001 to 17, when these persons were between 27 to 30 years old. And the goal here is to analyze whether the outcomes we observe at ages 27 to 30 depend on the labor market conditions that these people face at ages 18 to 20. So take, for instance, the first cohort in, in this table. Uh, these are persons that were born in 1974. Uh, we observed their outcomes between 2001 to 2004, when they were between 27 and 30 years old. Uh, and these persons presumably entered the labor market when they were between 18 and 20 years old. And they, that happened between 1992 and 1994. So what we are going to do is to calculate the average unemployment rate between these two years, and this is going to be the shock affecting the outcomes of adult persons uh, in our data. Uh, so basically what we are going to do is to use the, the variation in the unemployment rate uh, across countries and across cohorts to identify the effect of uh, entering the labor market and um, facing adverse uh, conditions, that is facing an, a, higher a higher unemployment rate at ages 18-20, on outcomes uh, during adulthood, between 27 and 30 years old. And what we do is to um, follow the literature, and instead of working with individual level observations, we are going to uh, use as our unit of analysis uh, cells or groups defined by cohort, year, gender, and country. So all our variables are defined as averages within each cell. And we combine all the information for the 15 countries. And we propose, a, following the literature, a model with fixed effects by country and years, estimated by OLS, we estimated separately for men and women, pulling all the information for the 15 countries. Are you assuming, mm -hmm. that, are you assuming sí. that you're are you only looking at secondary school educated people? Or are you also allowing people to, you're looking at college educated people? In one of the exercises, uh, they can go to college, and in that exercise, we are going to change the age. Instead of being 18, 20, it's going to be 22, 24. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. And that would be the case if we were using the actual date of entry to the labor market or actual date of graduation. But we are using age, so uh, the composition of the cohorts is likely to be exogenous because it only depends or on year of birth. So going to the results, here we have the first set. Uh, what we can see easily is that the pattern of results is very different for men than for women. For men, uh, the story is very much in line with results for developed countries. Men from the unlucky cohort, those facing higher unemployment rates at ages 18-20, end up being penalized uh, some years later. Uh, for labor force participation, we have a, a negative point estimate for men, a positive for women. They are close to be significant, but they are not. 
uh, for unemployment the same, they are not significant. For employment, we do have significant results. We have a reduction for men and increase for women. Uh, and this gender type of gender difference uh, didn't appear before in papers from developed countries. And here in the other labor market outcomes, we have no effect on hours, but we do see an increase both in hourly wages and monthly earnings for men and for women. For men, we were expecting this, uh, this increase uh, because of a composition effect. We expect low productivity workers to be the first one to be discouraged to enter the labor market or to, or to lose their jobs. For women, we were expecting the opposite. What we think might be happening or is that this increase uh, could be connected with changes in social perceptions about the role of women at home and in society that allow women to advance their labor market careers. Now, how do we explain the increase in employment for women? We think a possible explanation is the added worker effect, so that women enter in the labor market in bad times. But the thing is that uh, our result, the increase in employment, appears 10 years after entry. So what we think is going on here is that these women enter the labor market at the moment of the job and then uh, stay in the, la in the they, they remain in the market. So what we do to, to to test that is to run again the model, but now using as outcome variable the, lab the labor force participation uh, at ages before adulthood. So we have here the estimation for four different age groups. And what we have as results is uh, for men, uh, we see always a negative point estimate that sometimes is significant. For women, we have the opposite. The point estimate is always positive and sometimes it is significant. So we think this is uh, evidence consistent with the other worker effect. So um, women, uh, the idea would be that women uh, enter the labor market at the moment of the shock or immediately after the shock, but they remain in the, in the market, and we observe this effect on employment 10 years later. Uh, so what we need to explain now is why the, the, the persistent of, persistence of the effect, why they remain in the market. And what we think might be happening is um, that the, there might be some changes in behaviors or, or perceptions once in the labor market. So the idea here is that once in the market, for instance, women may change the value they assign to uh, having a job and being economically independent, or there could be a, gen a change um, more generally uh, at the level of the society um, in, the, in the attitudes to our working women. So what we do uh, to test for that, what we do here first is to use as, as outcome variables two measures related to the role of women within the household. And what we see here is that um, for we, um, a higher levels of, uh, of unemployment at ages 18-20 leads to uh, women to, to control a higher share of, labor, uh, of the household labor income and women to be more likely to be the head of the household. Um, the first effect is in part mechanical. We saw before an increase in employment and in earnings, but this is a measure that is usually associated with um, increasing bargaining power. So what we think is that, is that these two results are showing us that uh, women from unlucky cohort um, increase their bargaining power within the household uh, 10 years after the labor market entry in comparison to the other cohorts. And in the last set of results, what we do um, is to test uh, this idea of changing um, perceptions about gender roles, but at the level of the society. So what we have here are um, outcome variables that are, def uh, are binary indicator of strong disagreement with uh, statements reflecting traditional gender uh, roles or stereotypes. And what we have here is that facing higher unemployment at ages 18-20 lead to um, 
uh, increases in the disagreement uh, with these statements. All of the point estimates are positive. We have two significant a result for the first two measures that uh, tells us that the statement is that there is a problem if women have more income than the, than the husband. And the second is when a mother works for pay, the children will suffer. So what we are having here, uh, we are finding changes in society's uh, attitude toward this traditional gender role. Uh, what we have is that for people from the unlucky cohorts, there is an increase in the percentage of individuals that strongly disagree uh, with these gender stereotypes. And at the end, we, we run uh, some other models and some robustness. Um, first, one um, of the possible channels be behind the, the, the positive results for women are improvements in, in education. Um, so what we do is to use as an outcome variable years of education, and what we find is that there is an increase for both men and women. But what we, th what we think is that this cannot be the, the channel explaining the, the result for women, because if that was the case, we should be having similar results for men, and we are seeing the opposite. Uh, so what we do is to, to estimate again all the, all the models, but now controlling for years of education, and we find a similar conclusion. So the main results remain uh, even after controlling for education. Then a second thing we do is to, uh, instead of using the standardized measure of unemployment, to use the, the unemployment rate without standardizing, and, and again, the, we obtain the, the same set of, of the direction of the results is, uh, is the same. Then we do what Raquel was, was asking. Um, we change the presumed age of labor market entry according to the educational attainment of adult persons. So for persons who are 27 to 30 years old with secondary education, we use the shock at ages 18 to 20. But for workers who have college educa education, we use the shock at ages 22 to 24. And we still see the same uh, set of results in terms of direction and patterns of, of effects. And in the last uh, exercise we do is that we change the age of adulthood. Instead of, of looking at ages 27 to 30, we use a broader definition of adulthood, and now we look from age 20, 25 to 35. So we have a bigger sample there, um, but it is, um, if you remember the figure I, sh I showed um, before, here, uh, when we use ages 27 to 30, we are working with what we say is a balanced panel. When we work from 25 to 35, the, the panel is now unbalanced. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the last slide. So to wrap up, what we have analyzed here are gender differences in the effect of facing adverse conditions at the moment of labor market entry in 15 uh, Latin American countries. We found very different results for men than for women. The story for men is very much in line with the evidence from developed countries. For women, we, sh we found the opposite. We saw increases in employment and in earnings. Uh, we think uh, this is related with the other worker effect. So women enter the labor market at the moment of the shock and then remain in the market. And the persistence we think could be related, we have su suggestive evidence that it might be related with changes in uh, perceptions about gender roles, both at, uh, within household and at the level of the society as a whole. <laughs>